Ciao Juventini of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel, I will do it again with the main screen. Ciao Juventini of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel, I hope you are all doing well. The late night lives are back and I'm extremely happy. I'm a bit older now than uh, last year when I did the live, so probably I will not keep it for two hours long. we we'll try to make it a bit shorter. We start again. I don't know how long it will take. Let me know if you hear me well, if you see me well, because we are ready to start with a lot of diverse topics. But of course, when we are doing the late night live, you decide what way we go. We can speak about Alcaraz, we can speak about Roma that won 4-0 again the Zerbi. We can speak about Gravina, we can speak about whatever you want to. There are a lot of diverse topics, so first of all, ciao Juventini of the world. I say it again, I'm super happy that you're all here. Oh, I missed it, I really missed it, you know, because when we are doing the post-game lives, well, you react to the games, you react to the games, and not a lot of time we have the opportunity to read everyone. We don't have always the opportunity to take our time to speak, to explain, because it's full of emotions. Now, tranquilly, it is Thursday. I have to say that I'm uh, actually quite nervous, quite excited. Why? Because I just watched a game of MMA. I don't know if you are watching it or not. Between Dumbé and Baki, French champions. Let me know if you watched that uh, MMA, but I don't know if it's uh, international or just for France, but it was quite nice. Anyway, let me say hello to the people that are in the chat because that's the most important thing. Ciao, G Just Juve. Maximo of like, G Just Juve is asking, he was the first one in the chat. Ciao, Pechi Pechi. Ciao, Bogdan. Always the same. And the loyal ones, the fantastic Juventini are there. Ciao, Juve Pels. Ciao, Stavros. Ciao, Dino Mohamedovic. Ciao, Dragun Beppe. Ciao a tutti. I couldn't attend much the post games live, so I'm super happy that you are doing it, it again during the week. Forza Juve for the tough road ahead to the end of the season. Ciao Fyodor, ciao grande Fyodor, ciao Mikey Mazzarese and ciao to everyone. Nice to do it again. No, it's not a... Uh, yeah, of course, it's nice. It's nice. Ciao Takishi, grande Takishi, ciao Don Simons and ciao to Dragonzotto. Would you get close, Jorginho, Jorginho or Modric to Juve? Thank you for the nine months. Thank you, really appreciate it. The baby can come out now. Well, super easy question, according to me, gross. I will just give you an explanation. Modric, fantastic player. Probably stronger uh, of the two other ones. Uh, but... The ID card at a certain moment start to be yellow for everyone. Starting with Pirlo, when he was 30, when he arrived at Juve in 2011, when a lot of people were saying he's finished. Well, no, he was absolutely not finished and he showed it, but he was 30. Here we are speaking about the player. Uh, I'm not sure how old Modric is, tell us, but uh, maybe he's going towards 38, if I'm not wrong. So I think it's a bit... Uh, too much, too much of a stretch. Jorginho, even if he has undubious qualities, I have never been a fan of Jorginho. Never, 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 never. Cross uh, is a uh, is cross. Cross is cross. <laughs> cross is cross. So that question goes without any doubt. You know what? Uh, let me check if we are obliged, of course. Huh? Let me do a, a poll. Uh, who would you go for? Cross uh, was the first one. Uh, Jorginho was the second one and the third one is Modric so three players let me know what you think I already decided ciao Vincenzo ciao Jose with the hashtag telegram back I'm used with hashtags out back I, I I'm not that much used to that one but anyway we'll try to uh to see telegram back another one ciao LGJ just got home from work, having a beer and listening to Gigi Stuve, that sounds good, right? Ciao grande, ciao Anthony Sigro, or Isgro, ciao Sir Raz, there's never a life without a G just late. Oh, one minute, one minute, what do you want? Ciao Beppone, ciao Deepak, ciao LGG, ciao Juve Pels again. Aldo Bonasso, Beppe time, it's like, man, no, it was one minute, oh, one minute, guys. Ciao grandissimo Julian Dos Santos, I'm happy to see you as well here in the chat, as uh, Thomas Macluft, as Luca... Hey, today I have to take my time to say hello to all the people because the people that are here, the hundred people that are here are the best one, are the, the top ones because or they have the notification gang. When you have the notification gang for 
first of all, it's already fantastic because you want to know when I upload a video, when I put a short on, when I go live, you don't want to miss it. And secondly, because not only you receive the notification, but you decide also to click on it. Better than that, we don't have. Ciao, Luca. Ciao, Jim. Ciao to uh, Rad. Grandissimo Rad. 28 months on the channel. Thank you. Thank you for being here, my friend. Ciao to all the people. I try to not repeat all the time the same people. Ciao, Emiliano. Ciao, Benjamin. Uh, ciao, Yassin. Andy Goldin. 19 months. Thank you, my friend. With a beautiful... Uh, uh, maybe Andy is coming, uh, from where is coming uh, Andy? I don't know. But uh, in Belgium, that's a really famous sport. Huh? Really famous sport with... Uh, Really famous sport. The, especially the women are extremely strong. Um, ciao Daniel, ciao Elod, ciao Italian grande. Ciao Italian grandissimo. Ciao Ami, ciao Dragunzotto. I already said, but Dragunzotto is there. Saras, do you expect 13 months? Uh, what will happen with Gravina? More leaks in demission, uh, dismissal. Or I'm, I'm waiting for the towers of car to fall. Uh, thank you to Dragonzotto for one gift offered to the channel. Thank you to Limo2000. Ciao, Beppe, 17 months. I believe we said hello to everyone. Of course, I will answer to Sir Raz in a second. And Ralph is saying what happened to the lives with Romeo Agresti. I already answered that question, so I can't repeat every single time. But at the moment, we don't do them because he's super busy. I am super busy. And uh, because we are waiting, if we want to do it back, that uh, uh, more people are responding, especially when Juventus is a bit more active also with Merkel etc etc if there is nothing to say it makes no sense to bother people with no information oh now that we said hello a beautiful long intro to the people do we start i parked the question of sir raz i will answer it um what do we start with first of all you voted for cross with 75 percent 13 percent for Jorginho, 13 percent for modric what do we start with what do we start with with uh gravina uh, let's start with Gravina. At least we tackled that. Uh, of course, the details, we already spoke about it in this morning video. I made a long part of it. You can also scroll because I have added the chapter. So you can go towards Mercato. You can go towards uh, Alcaraz in the beginning. You can go towards Gravina or Joe Montemuro. That is extremely important because we have a newness in Juventus management. Also taking decisions to stop with a coach at mid-season. Or we can start also speaking about uh, Roma, De Rossi. We can speak about whatever you want to. Huh? So what do you want to know exactly about Gravina? If he will dismiss himself at this stage, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, I don't believe that Gravina will give his dismissal. Uh, would have been nice, would have been extremely nice, but I don't believe he will do it by himself immediately, first of all, because uh, apparently, according to the latest rumor, he is now under investigation, which he was actually not before or at least not officially there was an investigation but not really directly with him in the list of the suspects now after him speaking he is there in the list of the investigation but that doesn't mean that he's guilty i always want to be prudent i don't want to commit the same things as what they did to us there is an investigation juventus on front page juventus is guilty juventus will go in second division juventus disaster juventus bad juventus dirt we dirt we throw the I don't want to fall in that game. So unless it's proven that he's guilty, according to me, he's just now under investigation. Of course, I would love that the questions are not only going towards self-laundry, towards money laundry, towards the questions and the answers, what happened with that money or where is that com money coming from, from the antique books that you invested in an apartment in Milano. I don't only want to know these kind of things about the strange ways of money that we're investing or selling the TV rights of third division when he was president in 2018. I also would love personally, but that's my question. I don't know if you even have to start an investigation for that, but I would love that sometimes someone can explain me how is it possible that President Gravina became vice president of UEFA. This is, according to me, one of the biggest mysteries because you have two things or you have the qualifications to do it or you go based on merit. And if I see the state of Italian football today, <laughs> I have big questions regarding the merits 
the merits of Gravina. Why did he become a UEFA vice president? I have a lot of questions about that. I don't understand really, and I don't want to start with suppositions or so on, but I need to someone explain to me. Is it because the, all the beautiful stadiums that we built in Italy? I don't think so. Is it because of the fantastic, beautiful youth academy? I don't think so. Is it because we are the, the best country in terms of developing women football i don't think so is it because we are a country where there is never a controversy i don't think so is it because we are the country that is showing amazing progresses with the way that we are playing with the entertainment that we are showing with the television rights that increase that much i don't think so so i need really to understand why it is then i see andy golding that is saying it's easy to be vice president of uefa just punish juve and be friend with severin i didn't say it it is andy as you can read here below but my questions are that uh, I would love to understand it. When they explain me and they give me a valid reason, I will tell you, oh, now I understand. Now I can agree or I can disagree. But there are a lot of questions I have, especially uh, I need to understand as well why he is extremely angry now, why he is annoyed that there were a lot of leaks that came with his name on and he finished on the papers. I need to understand why and how that frustration why and where that frustration is coming from from Gravina because I remember that Juventus from the moment that there was a illegal and now we know it investigation on Juventus and when they finished every day on the papers with every time that logo of Juve that became bigger and bigger and bigger with burst in it we all remember it on Gazzetta dello Sport when we saw so many things big titles Juve in second division what is Juve risking without starting even to be in front of court without having the possibility to defend yourself well um yeah, he, he knew, he watched it, he saw it, he understand perfectly the situation. Now, you know, uh, you know, one time it's you, one time it's you, you just have to accept it and uh, and go on. And if you are not guilty, well, you will defend yourself and we will see what comes. So to answer simply the question of my buddy, Sir Raz, will he dismiss himself? I don't believe so. Why? Because he already came out publicly saying, I went free alone there to be heard because I want the truth to come out. And if it is like that, congratulations to him. Let's see. Let's see. I'm really curious how it will go. Today, I don't want to say that he is guilty, but I'm just patiently waiting to understand. Also, we have a bit of clarifications on that dossier of Suarez Juve, that Suarez, you know, it was because of Juve they tried to make some tricks and so on with the university in Perugia. We have been accused of everything. Apparently, they started investigation based on things that were absolutely not approved by anybody. It was absolutely not legal to go and take them. And then taking this information, first of all, they were illegal, and then sharing them with targeted journalists that decided to put them on the front pages parts of wiretaps, parts of text, parts of this part, cut it, edits of this, of this, of this, you know, targeted to punish Juve. Strange, huh? Strange, huh? How do we have to feel us like Juventini? I'm extremely upset with that because, you know, it's the biggest fight that I'm battling every single day on the channel. I need to understand, I really understand, how do we have to feel Juventini with, after six months of having seen dirt on us? When we are shown not guilty, well, nobody's speaking about it. You don't finish on the papers. And then three years after, three years and six months after, you still have to hear from non Juve, but even from some Juventini, that Juventus is always guilty. Juventus is always in the problems. Eh, it makes me annoyed. It makes me annoyed. So let's see. Let's see. I'm, uh, I'm extremely, extremely, extremely curious. That being said, if you have other questions about that topic let me know otherwise we go towards another topic so it's now the moment if you have questions about that to let me know in the meanwhile that you are writing i will continue to read some of your observations like the one of thomas our starting midfield are bent uh, ah but that's something about uh, something yeah we'll come on our midfield in a second yeah 
let's come on our midfield in a second. Uh, nepotism was the uh, answer about why Gravina was there. Uh, only because he's pro UEFA. For the rest, he never did anything good. J6, the worst thing is whatever um, dirt they will dig up on Gravina. Severin, nothing will change for Juve. Nope. Ah, no, 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 no. Nothing will happen. Eh? For Juve, nothing will happen. So, no. Maybe, maybe some Juventini, they will realize that what I'm saying since four years publicly on their channel, that it's not just an invention. Then it doesn't mean that Juventus is always innocent and Juventus did never nothing wrong in their life. That's not the message that I'm saying. I'm just saying pay attention because I really hate when you take the name, you put it on front page, and then you see the big headlines and you go with Juventus is, Juventus is that, Juventus is that, Juventus is that, without being informed about the facts, which is extremely, extremely annoying. That's for me what um, really annoys me. Uh, maybe he will accept a bleed deal and he won't compete in Champions League. It could be, could be a solution. Eh? Let's see what he will do. I'm really, no, I'm seriously, I'm curious about how it will end. Um... Why always you? Why always you? That's a really good question. Uh, before jumping on another topic, why only Juve? Juve, you have to really realize it, is the most loved club in Italy. But it's a team that is not a team that you don't look aside. The most loved, but also in the meanwhile, you have the reverse of the medal, also the most hated. Let's say one third of Italy is supporting Juve, two thirds are hating Juve. There is nobody that is neutral and saying, well, you know, why not? Juve, we like a bit. No, that doesn't exist. We like a bit. I mean, just saying, eh? Bologna, you like a bit. Atalanta, you like a bit. Palermo, you like a bit, whoever you want to. But you don't like a bit Juve. There is no you like a bit Juve. It's a, or you love or you hate. So when you are speaking about Juve, you know that you will impact the total audience of football. And the one third that are loving Juve, and especially the two thirds that are hating Juve. Especially when, when you are speaking bad about Juve. Because when you are speaking bad about Juve, the lovers, that one third, they will be extremely not happy like me on the channel, like you guys. We have that feeling of eh, it's not correct. We want to defend. While the two thirds, well, they will be interested. Because it's again Juve. Hey, look, we didn't win because of this. It's again Juve pointing fingers. They will read. They will be interested. Who cares if Fiorentina is doing something wrong? Nobody cares. You care a bit. One second. Ah, yeah, Fiorentina. When it's Juve, it's something totally different. It's something totally different. This is why they speak so much about Juve. On top of that, when you are on charge of an article, of an investigation about Juve, you are there. Your name is there. because Or you become a journalist that people will start to observe, a prosecutor that people will start to observe, can help a lot in your career. Eh? At least... Bad or wrong, you are in the middle of the eyes of everyone. That's why always Juve. That's why, that, as simple as that. As simple as that. Also because Juventus has a strategy of publicly, we don't speak, we don't publicly, we don't defend ourselves. Uh, we prefer being silent. I'm not saying it's a good strategy or a bad strategy, but that's the strategy of the club. Uh, will it change in the future? I don't know. But uh, uh, we defend ourselves where we have to defend ourselves. Unfortunately, in a way, uh, good in other way. It depends a bit of the case, case by case. Uh, and they know that Juventus uh, uh, publicly, they will let it come because uh, that's uh, a strategy that worked for so many years. Is it still working in 2024? That's another debate. Beppe, I have a question. Is it true that in the city of Torino, most of the... F no, uh, it was like that. Historically, yes. Historically, yes. But let's say like uh, maybe 15 years ago could be. But uh, no, it changed. It changed. Also because, you know, a lot of older generation were able to, uh, um, to live the Grande Torino. It was a fantastic team that tragically passed away. 
Um, but uh, it changed, it changed. And, and these people, of course, they transmitted it uh, into their generation, but no, it, it changed. Also with the nine years of Scudetti, with new generations, with the stadium, with the experience that you are able to live, uh, it's different. Look, <laughs> for example, also, you know, when I'm, uh, when I'm uh, in Torino, I always take the taxi. I love taking taxi because it's a moment where I love... but. Not only in Torino, eh? uh, when I was really traveling around Europe for my job and so on, I have always loved to take taxi more than uh, undergrounds. And so my, my work was paying for it. Eh? So that was not because I'm rich, because, you know, I was reimbursed back then. Not not now anymore. Uh, but it's a, it's a moment where you can really discuss with someone local. Um, you you can you can speak they explain they tell you stories that you will never hear or not on, on, on in the underground so it's always nice uh, to take taxi i it's a moment that i really 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 love and uh, you learn a lot of things for example they always tell me uh, whatever they are supporting and eh, that they are supporting torino or juve or whatever at the end you know we you start a discussion, it always ends with football in Italy. That's why it's beautiful. Italy is beautiful because it's a country of calcio. Um, but at the end, they always tell me, luckily, there is Juve. Because without Juve, probably would absolutely not have the opportunity to survive. If we have to count on Torino, and I'm speaking in that case about taxi world, but uh, they tell me, uh, we never see people taking the taxi to go to the stadium of Torino. While for Juventus, a lot of time we have airport to the stadium or airport to the city center of Juventini. Um, so they are saying, luckily there is Juve that is actually a big part of the city because Juventus business management is not only people that are actually making the Juventus club live, but also the city. So that's really important to answer that beautiful question, by the way. Um, you go to Torin, most of the um, shops sell Juve stuff. Not, It's true, it's true. Even at the airport, they used to uh, sell Torino stuff. Now it's only Juve store. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not a Juve store, but it's a corner in the airport that is selling Juve uh, articles or Juve items. Do you recommend going to, this, to see Juve for a league game or Coppa Italia based on money, safety, and experience? I have to say, Geratina, that if you go to the Allianz Stadium, in terms of safety, you risk zero. And I speak about it even if one day it has been uh, interpreted in a totally wrong way. Probably I expressed myself uh, bad or people they knew where to cut. But uh, I have been in the stadium uh, watching their diverse games with people. It was Juve Inter, for example. I'm speaking about the Alien Stadium. Eh, where behind me there were people with the shirt of Inter. Fantastic, eh? Nobody that, you know, is fighting. Nobody that is screaming. Nobody that is judging then you celebrate and you celebrate if it was 1-1. One, one. At the end, you know, also the Interisi, they were celebrating because they were scored the goal. Uh, guys, seriously, safety in the Allianz Stadium and the surrounding. I have never in my life experienced something bad. Then, like everywhere in the world, it can happen that you have a bad experience because you meet someone that is annoyed by something. You you know, I don't know. that, But that's something, you know, like uh, everywhere. But on the other side, pro promise you, every single time I went there, I had no problems. Whatever the game it is. I watched, I tell you, in Coppa Italia, Juve Inter. I watched uh, uh, other big games, Juve Lazio. I have never had any problem. But seriously, never any problem. Um, so you can go whenever you want, I think. Of course, then it's also how you behave. Eh? If you behave as a, someone provocative towards the other one, and if you insult, eh, then it's your own responsibility. That, that's you. Eh? Um, and look, Julian is saying in the chat, I had the same with Juve Rama, multiple Rama fans close to me, which is unthinkable in other places. So that's a great possibility. Uh, you see, it, it's it's not only, it's, it's for every everything, every game in the Allianz Stadium. And I love that. I tell you the truth, I, of course. If you go to watch Juve in your stadium, you want a 
predominance of Juventini because that's why you go for. But I have absolutely no problem. Why? Because I went, for example, one day to Valencia Juve and I didn't know about the Valencia supporter and so on. So I had my Juve shirt, you know, under a jacket. It was super warm. Oh, it was super warm. It was uh, the first game of Champions League. So I believe it was the beginning of September. Um, and uh, zero problems, huh? Certain moment I take my I was in Juve, nobody, not even a strange look at me. I believe it's beautiful when you can go and support your team. Of course, you know that you are not at home, so you have to respect the rules. That but that makes totally sense. Um Beppe, have you been uh, on a Juventini taxi driver? Yeah, I have been, and I have also um uh, wait, I show you because there is a really famous one eh, in Torino. Um Am I able to show you? I have it here. You probably already saw it. Um, did you see already that taxi? I don't know if you are able really to see. Look, that's the taxi with all the signatures from a lot of uh, Juve legends. Here you see, for example, Weston McKinney with the 14. Uh, but you have all the players eh? from the past, from the present. Who else can we see? Uh, Fino alla fine. Um, it, it's, it's a solo la Juve. Uh, the Licht, if you see here, you have the Licht, for example. Um, so, eh, it's really nice, really nice. So, that's uh, one of the taxis in Torino. Um, they explain me a lot of nice stories. Eh? It's really, really, really beautiful. I love it. Um, I love it. I really love it. What else? What else? Um, thank you, Italian Grande. I love your live show. Since 2021, Juventus are always on the news. Even in Australia, 1.1 million Italians, three generations, mostly love you. Thank you for your eight months, Italian. Um, no, but it's, it is what it is. Look, look, it's easy. Eh? Saudi Arabia, Supercoppa, they were pissed off because... Juve and or Milan were not present. They were pissed off. They were pissed off. They really tried at a certain moment even to cancel it. It was not possible, but they really tried to. Because of course, Juve, but it's normal. Eh? But now I'm not speaking only about Juve, but Juve, Inter, Milan are the three clubs that are really moving internationally. The other ones, it's a bit more difficult. But that's correct. That's absolutely... But also, Del Piero going to, uh, to uh, Sydney uh, helped even more, but the real reason is the generations of Italians, of course. Um, I actually saw a video about Stadium in Italy and all of them are old. Yeah, but that, that's that's the problem that we already spoke about before. Ciao, Anthony, Grand Anthony. I am still working to go to Torino for my first ever game. Hopefully some I hope for you. Um, hey, look, Giratina. Thanks, guy. I'm saving money to come in Italy. And one of my goals is to come to see Juve. Uh, I feel so comfortable about your statements. Forza Juventus. Hey, you see? Grazie Aman, grandissimo Aman, 28 months, like Amir, 12 months. Here's too many more years, mi amor, amore mio, ti amo, grande, with a fantastic, beautiful picture. Hopefully we can see that picture again soon, when, I don't know. Uh, have you done the stadium tour? I was very disappointed. I did it uh, a few times, I did it a few times, uh, but it's a long time ago, I didn't do it. The last time I did it, I actually did it a private se don't tell anybody, huh? but I did a private session when uh, it was the first time that I visited the offices of Juve and I did it uh, uh, on a one-on-one -on -one with, with a colleague that uh, really brought me in uh, all areas, even more areas that uh, the, the people are able to see because you, I went to a, a media center that was behind. I went to some parts of the inside of the stadium that nobody can see even with the stadium tour. Um, but uh, no, even in the locker room when there is nobody and you can really go there. I even have a picture where I sit on a, on a, on a chair of, a, of the player. Uh, that's something that you can't do, of course, when you are visiting. Um, it depends when you go. Is it a pre-game? Is it uh, the day before or not? The atmosphere? Then I don't know what you expect uh, um, of the stadium tour. If When it's your first time, I believe it's still impressive. When it's your very first time. Then a bit less. But I tell you, the, the real tour, it's a long time ago I didn't do it. 
uh, people they don't want to speak about football they want to speak about hotels so hotel there is a really nice one that i recommend no nice it's not really true <laughs> i i experience better hotels but there is one there is one i need to find it's really close to the uh, to the stadium um what is the name again i'm trying to remember the game guys uh, the hotel sorry wait let me check if i have it in my wallet um yeah i have a bit uh, a lot uh, here boarding pass boarding pass uh boarding pass. no i have to go to hotels uh let me check if i am able to find it easily Ah, I have it. I have. I have found it. Okay, this one. This one, uh, Hotel Galant is really, 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 really good. Um, why? Because it's actually really close to the stadium. Really close to the stadium. You can go walking. Uh, of course, it's only if you want to go to the stadium because it's far. The stadium is not located in the city center. But if you go there for a night game, for example, it's really difficult to go back to the city center. So the hotel is really located there. You can go walking. It's like 15, 20 minutes, depending where you are in the stadium. You can go walking and then you are there. Uh, hotel is clean. It's the, the, the staff is really nice. Then is it the most beautiful hotel in the world? No, but I really like it. Just they also, you know, check with uh, availabilities and when the games are planned so then the price the price increase a bit more but it's still okay also in terms of costs so it's not the most expensive hotels um, so that's good that's really good okay can we speak about football or not that's ideal that's the best um, now but che check hotel galant um, andy Check the J Hotel is really fantastic. Unfortunately, uh, J Hotel, when there is a game, it's really out of. If you have money, yeah. Otherwise, uh, um, it really costs a lot. Uh, really a lot. Too much. Too much. Okay, can we speak about uh, football? Yes, we can. So, what do we want to start with? Well, De Rossi and Roma. That's the point. And then we go to the midfield. Because I saw earlier some people were saying, when will the De Rossi links start? I watched the game. Uh, Rama against uh, Brighton. And there are a lot of takeaways I wanted to, to, to say about that. Um, De Rossi totally deserved to win with Rama. 4-0 is, is a correct result. They totally demolished the Zerbi. Uh, was I expecting it? A 4-0 is, uh, is always difficult to expect. On the other side, I am not that surprised about it. Why? Because the Zerbi, we know it, but he said it also publicly, he doesn't care about conceding a lot of goals. He always said, we play for fun. For him, football is fun. Uh, winning is a consequence of having fun. That's a philosophy yeah? that personally, I partially don't agree. I more don't agree than agree. Because um, I want to win. Then, if you tell me, Beppe, football, yeah, football is fun with my cousin, with my brother, with my best friend, when we are doing a tournament, when I'm coaching the kids... There is that part, that bigger part. If you take a cake, the biggest part of the cake is fun. And then you have the competition. But still, even if they are eight, nine years old, you need to put into their mind that competition level. This is also asked by the club, by the way. Eh? It's not only bad pay. It's also the club that is saying, slowly but surely, let them also understand what is a victory, what not. For example, with small things, when you score a goal, celebrate. After a win of a game, you go and you celebrate. You know, if you don't win a game, you can speak, you can explain, you can say that it's not the end of the world, but don't go and sing uh, like, you know, it's small things to inculcate that winning mentality. So, you know, that's something 
I'm not already a big fan of. Especially if you are looking at the stats of the Zerbi over his career and you see that he's conceding more goals than he's scoring goals. Uh, then if you're coaching Frosinone, Sassuolo, uh, Brighton, who cares? I always pay attention to coaches that are having these big super sprint in the beginning of the season. Zeman, for example, is a coach like that. Uh, but Di Francesco is exactly a coach like that. Even Spalletti, that is way more experienced and way more balanced. But it's also a bit like that. These mega turbo starts in the beginning of the season, where at a certain moment, boom, they drop because the energy goes away, because it's a lot of games, because sometimes you have this energy this energy that is leaving, uh, because you have some injuries, because you have a lot of problems. So I'm always paying attention, because the Zerbi is a coach that will always fantastically do in the beginning of the season. And if he goes, and if he continues, he stays in that fantastic vibe, and then he will go and win. But I am I have never been a pro de Zerbi. Then he can win 6-0 against Liverpool and the day after he can lose 12-0 against the I don't know Crystal Palace. And uh, who cares? Um so 4-0, I was not surprised that the Zerbi is taking. Also because you know on a 2-0, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. He goes, let's go, andiamo, andiamo. Uh, even if today I saw an image where he said, calma, calma. He said, calma while losing. So, you know, that calma that we are saying to Max Allegri when it's a 1-1 or when we are winning 1-0, uh, we are pissed off with Max because he's saying calma when he's winning 1-0, but we are praising the Zerbi when he's saying calma when he's already losing 3-0. Um, so this is about the Zerbi. About De Rossi, I love De Rossi a lot as a player. It's one of my biggest regrets, I understand, and that's also probably why I respect him also so much. But I always regret that he never played for Juve. Uh, a player that I really respect as a human perspective, as a player perspective, as a behavior, attitude. I love De Rossi. I'm super happy that he's doing well, of course. Happy until he always stay behind Juve. If he's doing better than Juve, I'm not happy anymore. As long as he stays behind Juve, I'm happy for De Rossi because I like him. Like I like Dybala, like I like uh, Huysen, for example. So, you know, uh, I never seen Rama as a competitor, so I don't care about them. But I'm happy that he's doing well. Taking De Rossi instead of Mourinho, then a lot of people, they will tell me, Beppe, why are we not doing the same? When you see De Rossi, what he's doing after the departure of Mourinho in so small amount of time, only Juve is not doing it. Calma. 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 This is what I want to say. Why? Because you have two ways when you are betting like that. Or it goes fantastically well immediately, or it totally flops. You have no middle way. Or fantastic, or it flops. Why is... De Rossi doing fantastic at Roma. He's a eternal futuro capitano from Roma. Nobody else more than him understand Roma, the environment, the supporters, where he is, the atmosphere, the pressure, the particular city. Under he knows perfectly what Roma is. He came and he's a total different person at Mourinho. Mourinho, don't forget, a few months and his contract was stopping with Roma. So it's not a coach that had two years of contract, one year of contract. At the end of the season, he was gone. They were, at that moment, ninth in the league, not second. They were ninth in the league with Mourinho. That was totally out of project. It was over. They already took the decision they would have not renewed with Roma and they stopped. In the meanwhile, they took as a caretaker De Rossi as a bet. If it went wrong, they would not go be relegated. They would survive. They would be out of Europe if they bet on De Rossi until the end. What is the miracle that can happen? That De Rossi is doing well. That's the miracle that they can happen. So the pressure was not put on De Rossi. You need to qualify obligedly to the Champions League. You don't have to win the Scudetto. Do the best you can. He comes, there is the pressure that he's putting himself on him. 
and he starts to win. He finds the right words because he knows the environment. He finds the right words. Players are happy. They receive new trust. He also has back Pellegrini. That's an important factor for Roma. He has back a Dybala at 100% of physicality. Super important because we are speaking about Dybala. He knows Paredes because he played with Paredes. Paredes today played a fantastic game. Never seen a Paredes like that at Juve. Never seen him like that. Um, and then you have that mega boost of you win the first game, you win the second game, you win the third game, you continue to win. Against Inter, you even took the lead for a certain moment. Then you lost, but it is okay because it was against Inter, so nobody cares at the end. And you continue to win. You go through against Feyenoord. You play today, you win for the... And you are in that period of everything is going well. Mental positivity, positive thoughts, and everything is going well. So at the moment, De Rossi was absolutely a good answer for the Roma. But it's a total difference with Juve. You can't compare both situations. De Rossi could have totally flopped. And if it flopped, it flopped. But we know it was until the end of the season and then you change. They had nothing to lose at that moment. Zero to lose. Important factor. If I am jumping on the De Rossi wagon now today on the De Rossi train that is coming because I see a lot of people even experts online De Rossi is now the best coach on the world calma 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 how will I judge De Rossi it's the same way as I'm judging all the coaches also a De Zervi etc etc from the moment they will show me consistency in a few seasons Consistency in result, improving in result, not only, but how he's able to manage the locker room from the start of the season, when he's building everything, how is he building a preseason? How will his team start in the beginning of the season? Will they be able to keep that tempo until the end of the year? How will he deal when some players will be injured? How will he deal when some players will be unhappy in the locker rooms, create some troubles, will he be able to manage them, yes or no? I wish the best for Daniel De Rossi, sincerely, but before jumping on, he's the best, it's impossible, because otherwise, we go to be crazy, then we change, we are jumping on the train that is at the moment on trend, like Paladino was last year, Sarri was again the magician, like this year, some people told me again that Sarri was fantastic, uh, like Pirlo, sometimes, because we don't like Allegri, then suddenly Pirlo is again the fantastic coach. No, he was bad. Max Allegri is doing bad, not what we expect, but that doesn't mean that Pirlo becomes better suddenly. Like uh, Italiano, that today was about to lose against Maccabi Haifa. At the end, he won 4-3 after Maccabi Haifa also receiving that red card. It was a bit more easy. Um, but pay attention, eh? pay attention to jump on Italiano is the best. Then uh, Udinese is doing 10 good games. Udinese is fantastic. Then it's Paletti that is fantastic. Wait before jumping on the De Rossi. At least, no, wait. I'm speaking to myself. Beppe, calma. Wait before jumping on a train. Tiago Motta, that you know, I will always say to you, I'm super proud. I discovered Tiago Motta in a way. I discovered, he never know, he never heard about me. Eh? I never speak with, spoke with him. But I discovered him. I discovered him. Um, Tiago Motta showed me a lot more ingredients. Trained the Youth Academy of Paris Saint-Germain. So he knows how to deal with youth. Important. One. He's showing me result in Italy. With Spezia. With Bologna. And what is he doing with Bologna? He played in big teams. Inter that won the triplette. Paris Saint-Germain. Barcelona, he knows, he knows different cultures, knows different leagues, he already was present in locker rooms with a lot of stars, with big egos, an Ibrahimovic, for example, <laughs> bigger ego than Ibrahimovic, I don't know, there are not a lot of people with a bigger ego, so, you know, Tiago Motta has a lot of things that are telling me he can, it's also not one that goes a la Mourinho or a la, I don't know, uh, whatever coach that is going in front of microphones, he wants the light on him. Really? Did you already see Tiago Motta speaking? He never speaks. 
calma, tranquillo. He even put the code of conduct that is punishing the players that are simulating. He hates it. He doesn't want that players. I love it. But he's showing me in seasons what he can do. The ultimate step is how will he lead a big team. But because of his player experience, I think that the step will be a lot more different than, for example, in Italiano, for example, a Paladino. Then I see in the chat that you're speaking about Maresca. Maresca is an extremely um, smart person. He already worked in the past with Pep Guardiola, not, now, not last year, uh, before that. He already worked with uh, Pep Guardiola. <laughs> even if he was managing the youth team, but he was working already partially with uh, Pep Guardiola. He was at Parma and he didn't do a bad job at Parma. Eh? He didn't do a bad job at Parma. And uh, and now he went to uh, Leeds. Is it Leeds? Uh, or oh, Leicester, Leicester, sorry. I always confuse uh, uh, Leicester. And he's doing a fantastic job there as well. So I believe that he's also a coach that uh, is growing a lot. Not I would not go immediately for Maresca today, but uh, um, yeah. Yeah, um, here. Uh, Aldo, if I have a good memory, Aldo, correct me. Yeah? Um, I believe you were one of the first, you were there present when I said the first time Tiago Motta and you were absolutely not pro Tiago Motta back then. If I have a good memory, yeah? if I have a good memory. Rauf is going out of control. Huh? And now, now it's impossible to have now, guys. Why? Because uh, he's doing well with Bologna. <laughs> He's doing well with Bologna. Uh, he will not leave now, so it makes totally no sense. Um, so this is about the De Rossi uh, situation. De Rossi and uh, who? And uh, the Zerbi. So I was absolutely not surprised. Today, Milan, they were about to, uh, uh, to lose. Huh? Uh, they were one man up since, I believe, the half of the first, uh, first half. And... Uh, they were uh, they were about to lose disaster 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 um imagine Thiago Motta taking over Juve this summer and Juve fighting for relegation with Motta uh ah no but oh i i think i briefly spoke about it in uh 2 days ago or yesterday i don't remember uh in, or 2 days ago i believe in that long video where i was speaking about you know how we are judging, etc. You know, impulsive reaction and so on. I said, you know, I have always been like that. Defending the coach, blaming the coach, but it's never only the coach. As if Tia... Now we are saying Tiago Motta because that's the, the rumor. Uh, but if Tiago Motta would join, I am not expecting... But seriously, I tell it today. Sir Raz is there in the chat, so he will probably write it uh, that I said it today. I am not expecting that next year we will win uh, Scudetto, uh, Coppa Italia and do extremely well in the new format of Champions League. I don't expect it immediately. I expect that there still can be some difficult parts, but I will still back up Thiago Mota or whoever is coming. Eh? For what reason? Because he needs time. He needs time. We need to believe uh, in the beginning of the season, Scannavino, he spoke about something. He explained a lot of things. And then a few weeks later, uh, John Elkan, he said, this is year zero. Some people, sometimes they forget or they don't want to listen. You know, it's most of the time it's like that. You don't like what you are hearing, you forget because you, you are not interested. But John Elkan said, this is year zero. I know that a lot of people are saying, yeah, it's not true, it's not year zero, Allegri is there since three years, we don't see progression, there is no improvement. Guys, it is year zero. Who can tell me, and then I will read, of course, the comments of uh, uh, Juve Pels, of uh, Mohamed Youssef, uh, of Amir, no, Amir already read, and all the other people. Who can tell me why this, not next one, this one is year zero? Who can tell me? And we still have Max Allegri, yeah? Why is this year zero while we still have Allegri for three years? As easy as that. As easy as that. It's the first year, for the first year, it's the year zero of a new, especially sporting management. Juntoli arrived. And we all know, huh? Juntoli arrived 
late with the impossibility to do Mercato financially, but also because we didn't know if we would have played competition of Europe or not Europe, if there was a problem or we didn't know what would happen with Juve. You didn't know if you had to go for quantity with quality. We didn't know. At the end, we did, said we do nothing. Also Allegri there, it would have been, I believe, I sincerely believe, on the 7th of July, when we present uh, Giuntoli, that his first decision is we sack Allegri and we go for someone else. Who? What coach? How? How can a sporting director go and point for a new coach in that year zero where we don't know? Tiago Motta was not really free because he wanted to extend one year or at least to stay one more year with Bologna. And he did well. He did really well. Uh, who do you go for? To hell. To hell was at Bayern. But just say to hell. A lot of people were saying to hell, to hell. Look at De Rossi. Look at to hell. Sometimes it works, sometimes not. Last year, if it's not for a total collapse of Dortmund, last year is throwing away all the good work of Nagelsmann. Eh? And this year, they are true in Champions League and I hope they will win it. Uh, But he's losing the first time the league, the Mannschaftsheile, or I don't know what there, in uh, Germany after 11 years. To hell, huh? that a lot of people, they... Because you don't go, I know, I understand the will of change, we want to change. But you just don't go with, we change just to change. Because we don't like one, just change. People, they said, we want Montero. And you, I have... <sighs> A huge respect for Montero. A huge respect for Montero. I love Montero. If I could, I would tattoo the number four of Montero. Even if I don't like the number, I would still do it for Montero. Uh, but he was not ready. And you just throw away a coach like that. You just throw away a coach like that. Would be totally strange to do so. If he doesn't work, then he finished like Pirlo in Karamagaruk in uh, Turkey and then in uh, Sampdoria in second division and now he's playing uh, to avoid relegation. Ragazzi, respect also the legends. Uh, I see Fabio Grosso. Look, uh, he went to Lille. Lyon, Lyon. And I love Fabio Grosso. And by the way, Fabio Grosso is still w probably the best one of the 2006 World Cup winners that became coaches. Then, uh, Mohamed, give me a second. Juve Pels, give me a second. Um, can you tell me? Can you tell me? From the 2006 World Cup, the players that became coach. John Even, who did, who did well? Who did well? Andy saying Tudor. Uh, I'm glad that we avoided Tudor. Tudor is great. I love Tudor. But I'm not sure it was the right match. Cannavaro. Cannav hey, give me the names. Cannavaro. Cannavaro did really bad. With really, he's still doing really bad. I believe in Italy, he's coach Benevento. He was sacked. Uh, in uh, China, he really didn't do well. He won one league in China, okay. But uh, even there, he didn't do well in Saudi Arabia. But no. Uh, Inzaghi, not Simone, but uh, Inzaghi, the people, really bad coaching career. Uh, now he has been even sacked by Sardinitana. Gattuso, he coached Napoli, didn't do well. Marseille, didn't do well. Uh... What other team did he coach? I don't know. I didn't know. Pirlo. Pirlo. He, at Juve, people say he did well. First of all, a lot of people say he won two titles, which is correct. Huh? I love Pirlo. But the first one is a Supercoppa. He didn't qualify to that Supercoppa. It was because Sarri won and he went to Supercoppa. He won, it's one game. You win, you lose. He won. Luckily. And I'm super grateful for that. But Pierre didn't do well as a coach. Die. He's still not doing well as a coach. He can become. I hope he can become. But no. Um, Chiellini didn't start. And he will not become a coach neither. And he didn't win that uh, World Cup. Uh, Camoranesi. Camoranesi at Malta. In Malta. Uh, Malta, by the way. Um, 
no, guys, there is nobody that did really well. I believe Fab, Fabio Grosso eh, eh here. Gilardino is probably the best one. Gilardino is the best one from all of them. And then you have Fabio Grosso as well, because Fabio Grosso, he won with Frosinone in Serie B. Uh, in Serie A has been, always been difficult, but also with the youth academy, he did really well from Juve. Um, yeah, Girardino, that is doing quite well with Genoa, uh, in Serie B, in Serie A. Uh, and, and now you have De Rossi, but un and De Rossi, we need time to understand. Uh, um, we need time to understand, because now it's 10 games, I believe. Uh, uh, so let's give him a bit of time. Hopefully he will do well. But uh, no, uh, Zizou, he didn't win. Uh, that's it, and guys. The, the, they all tried, most of them, to become coach. They, they didn't. I don't even know why we are speaking about that. Um, boo. I don't remember. Um, I saw the name of Ferrara earlier. Um... Ferrara, Ferrara, Ferrara. Wait, and let me check. Um, ah, it's uh, still. His name is still. Uh, the the surname, sir, still, but the name I. Uh, Will still. Will still. Can you check, Fyodor? Will still. And you check if I'm correct or not. If this is the guy that you're speaking about. Um, oh, sincerely, sincerely, guys. No, sincerely now. Uh, since I opened that second channel, speaking about leagues. I'm not saying that uh, I'm perfect. I will never say that because I, you never... But I think I became even better. I think I became even better. Sometimes you have to be humble, sometimes not. I, th I think I really became better. Seriously, yeah? Like, uh, poof, poof, much more. Now, because in the past, I was looking like this. I was listening. Uh, now that I'm working on it, you know, it's... Um, Ciao, Juve, Central Florida, grande ragazzi. Uh, so let's read the comments first of uh, my friends, Juve Pels. Seven months, thank you for your membership, brother. Henrik, what a nice comeback. Let's have a win versus Atlanta. I will just give you... Uh, then people will be pissed off. The last time I made a video and I said uh, ex the title was expected loss. Not because I expect Juve to lose. I answered to the video that I made the vid in the morning before, before the game. I said I have a feeling that we will not win against Napoli. Hopefully I'm wrong, I hope. And people eh, expect that loss. Now you expect that Juve lose. How how did we arrive there? That No, it's not that I expect Juve to lose. I, I, I hope always that Juve wins. And But that game, that particular game, I expected not to win. So it could have been an expected loss. Now, against Atalanta. Atalanta is a bit... Uh, how can we call Atalanta uh, the surprise cookie is that a good uh, description of Atalanta you never know which Atalanta will turn up you don't know sometimes you have a disaster Atalanta and sometimes you have uh, Atalanta uh, Barca 2015 Real Madrid 2017 it's really crazy Atalanta is unpredictable. Against Juve, most of the time they do well. Why? Because it's Juve. Uh, so then, you know, the motivations come uh, by themselves. But uh, I, saw, I watched them uh, against Sporting. Sporting is good. Uh. This season, Sporting is good. They did 1-1, one, one, but that result is lying a bit. Because they hit three times the post. One goal, one ca was cancelled. Skamaka, that uh, was a total disaster, starting to do better. Uh, he woke up with a fantastic goal. <laughs> so, you see, uh, Atalanta played well. Eh? 
they played really, really well. And, and they had energy. Yeah? Then on top of that, and then I will read, now I will read the comment of Mohamed Youssef and then we enter the Juve Atalanta game. But seriously, if you, if you look at, we have no midfield. <laughs> we have no midfield. So that game, that game against Atalanta will be a tough one. Let's come back on that one in a second. First, I want to read and also thank for uh, the donation. I think it's the first donation of the evening. Yeah. Um, yeah, I believe I believe so. Thank you. Really, really appreciate. Let me check if it's right or not what I'm saying. Yeah, I saw a lot of people that renewed their membership, but it's first donation. So really, thank you, Mohammed. Uh, that also sometimes is uh, putting the um, the super chats. Uh, is super chat or super like or what is it? Super sticker? I don't know what it is. Uh, under a video, you know that sometimes you can do it. Uh, and when, when I see this kind, of, it's just fantastic. It's really appreciated. Uh, sometimes you know even more than during a live. Why? Because you know, it, uh, when I'm doing the, the videos, that's a lot of work. And then you see that it's appreciated by people uh, and they want to support what you are doing. Just fantastic. So I really wanted to thank you personally, uh, Mohamed Youssef. I think since we already uh, decided to invite like a mid-size underbuilt teams, it's better go for Thiago. This team isn't built for Allegri style. Um... It's true, it's true, it's true. I believe as well that this team is not the best team for Allegri. Uh, and that's why when we are playing Max, I'm always saying pay attention because responsibilities are shared. Then he's the coach, he takes the blame the most and it's totally correct. But I agree, uh, then Tiago or not Tiago or whatever, that's you know based on the future plans it, Thiago is now on 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 all the rumors and he's the number one target today I was hearing Momblano saying you know no it was not Momblano by the way it was not it was some, someone else that said uh, I believe he has a 40% chance uh, to come to Juve um, so it's it's big yeah 40% is really big then you have some rumors that are saying that he even agreed or gave a green light to Milan so it could be that he's playing on two different roles yeah huh? He's playing in two different games, saying yes to Milan, I would be ready, not signing, eh? not yes, I come, but yes, I'm open to continue to discuss after the season, and also maybe saying yes to Juve, I'm open to discuss after the season. So it can be that after Bologna, at the end of the season, he can go or to Milan, eh? depending on the project, depending on the cash that they will have on the table, not only for him, eh, but the investment for the project. We heard his... Um, agent and his entourage that said for Tiago Motta uh, he will not go where he's just someone that is there and do it no he needs to be there for a project a long-term project that is also involved in some choices will Juve give that responsibility of involving a young coach like Motta I don't know eh? so it's not sure but uh, this team I believe has not been 100% built for Allegri. I agree with that. But by the way, it has been built for nobody because we just signed uh, Wea. Um, so what did I say that I wanted to do? I forgot. Speak about our midfield. Uh, Nestor, Beppe, if you could only keep four players from the current squad for next season, who would you keep? <sighs> Four players only. Mm. Let me think, yeah, because four is not a lot. Huh? Um, I would keep Dusan Vlahovic. Locatelli. Then you will rate if I'm right or not. Huh? You will tell me how much you, you think I'm right or not. So, Dusan Vlaovic, Locatelli, Cambiaso, and Yildiz. Oof. Locatelli, Cambiaso, Vlaovic, Yildiz. Whew. Yeah. Yeah. 
Pois, for ciao Aldo, buonanotte. Um, it's ciao Sasha. It's tough. Four is tough because I would love to keep uh, so other. Bremer, eh, you know that's the player that I was really doubting because I see that you're writing Bremer, but according to me, I believe that this season Bremer is top one. Can we say top one? Best performance of Juve. I didn't like the initial part of uh, Bremer, but then he became top one according to me. But I think that I still not 100% sure if he's ideal in the uh, form and defense. I know that he can play there, let's not start. But ideal, 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 I am not sure. That's my only small doubt. Otherwise... I would say keep Bremer, <coughs> but I need to do to, to, to some sacrifices uh, if I'm obliged to keep for Yildiz <coughs> is the future that you, you can't sell now. You need to give him one year of test to really see what he's worth. It would be a pity to let him go uh, without knowing. Vlahovic. Uh, Vla I was hesitant between Vlahovic and Bremer. Why? Vlahovic I keep and not Bremer. Because Vlahovic he still have a lot to progress and to show. But can you find another player than Vlahovic in that role for a cheap money? I don't know. Can you find... For cheaper a center defender, I think we can. You see my, my reasoning? Finding a replacement for Dusan Vlaovic for the same age, because he's 24, with the same potential for cheap price, I don't know if you are able to find it. Finding a Bremer. I think you can. Hey, people are saying, what about Kesa? I need to choose, guys. I need to choose. Kesa, I, I need to be hard. You know, making decision. When you have to make decision sometimes people will uh, be happy, sometimes people will be pissed off. This is when you make decisions. You know, there is only when you are not doing decisions that everyone is happy. No, not even, because then people are not happy because you didn't decide. Um, uh, guys, Kiesa is 20, how much? 26 or 27? Can you tell me if it's 26 or 27? I will check if I can. Uh, 26. 26 and he will become when 27 he will become 20 in october so we have time so it's 26 he's 26 he comes from an acl physically he needed longer than expected to recuperate mentally according to me he still didn't recuperate at 100 it's a player that i don't know why he's not performing at 100 today i don't know valid reasons or not but if the reason is because you don't like that when you are doing the predicted lineup we are playing a 3-5-2 and you are second striker while on the field you are still playing your position on the left uh, I don't want Kier oh. people ask me to choose four um, so I don't want to sell Kier, but if I have to, and also because you have to take everything into consideration, he's earning 5, 5.5. 5. If he extend, he already said a few, or the rumors was there a few months ago that it was for more. Do you really, if you have a wallet where there is not a lot of money in, would you increase the salary of Kier? Tell me now in the chat, yes or no. The Chiesa of today, if you sit around the table and he says, okay, I want to increase my salary to extend from five, I would go to earn, let's say, 
cautious, 7.5 for extending three years. So that means contract until 2028. Uh, well, let's say 2027. Until 2027, increase from 5 to 7.5. Would you do it? Yes or no? Would you do it? Yes or no? Uh, Italian, I know that you are the biggest fan of Chiesa, so you are saying yes. Uh, Alwi saying yes. Andret is saying yes. So we have a lot of yes at the moment. 100% yes. Yes. Uh, but Italian, it doesn't count. It's only one time that you can say. Yeah? Uh, Stavro is saying no. Keep Sule instead with less salary. Uh, Jimmy is saying... Mm, mm, mm. Uh, depends on who is the coach. Anthony is in difficulty, I see. Um... No for David. Now, I will ask the question again. I will ask the question again. Because maybe you didn't understand or what. Or This Chiesa, you don't know about who is the next coach or not. You don't know. The Chiesa that we have today, knowing the difficult situation financially that we have, etc., etc. You take everything into account. Eh? You know that you have a Yildiz that prefers to start from the left. You know that Chiesa prefers to start from the left. This Chiesa asking for, with all the financial problems that we have, a contract extension until 2027 for 7.5 million euro, which is 15 million euro from the club. So the club is paying now 10 million euro gross. They will go towards 15 million euro gross, 7.5 for the player. Uh, without guarantee that one day he will not leave. Huh? Would you do it? Yes or no? Knowing that we saw the Chiesa that is today, it's not 100%. Would you do it? Yes or no? A poll? A poll. We do a poll. Let's go. Yes, no. How much people are we? 128. We go with at least half of the people voting. So it is 60. At least 60 people need to vote. If we don't reach 60 people, it's not validated. If we have, we can continue. Uh, when it's slowed down, we stop. But 60 is the minimum to make it actually right. Uh, what did I didn't read or not? People are saying, did you already start speaking about Merino? Not yet. Um, not yet. I still someone have the hope to bet. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. But when you vote, you have to vote without emotions. Eh? You have to vote with you are the boss of Juve. You have the wallet and you take a really clear decision. Yes or no. Eh, because if you go with emotion and if you have Chiesa of Spaghetti Mafia Italia, eh, then you're, 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 then it's not Chiesa of today, it's Chiesa of today that you're extending or not. Now I will shut up because otherwise it will influence your votes. No, because, no I know, I, I love Chiesa, fantastic. Wallet in the hand, today, Chiesa of today. Who said that? Who said that? Yeah. So, hey, but that's for every player. It's times two. Huh? Every player, whoever, it's times two. There is no decreto crescita anymore. Um, and Anthony saying, I would think about it, which in the past was absolutely not the case. Um, Vlad is saying there is no care. I, I still hope that he can come back. I hope so. But it's now. Eh? It's now. Eh? Um, 
Yeah, but that's also the easy thing. Eh? I would extend Canada because it's not my money, so I don't care. Um, Yeah, but Kiesa has still scored a beautiful game. Hey, what do we do then? Uh, we wait. If they score, we extend. If they don't score, we don't extend. Yeah. It's, a, it's a big one. Huh? I would really think a lot before doing it. Um... Yeah, yeah, but they, I didn't ask to negotiate. Huh? Uh... But that's what Juve wants to do, eh? negotiate. Eh? Ciao, Daniel. Grande, Daniel. I started taking the metro to work and I'm listening to you every morning. You definitely make it so much better. Thank you, Daniel, for taking time to listen in the metro. I know that that's, for I don't know where you're from, Daniel. I don't remember by heart. But um, uh, I remember that in London, for example, I love London because in London, I didn't take the taxi. I did it just for fun to understand, uh, but um, I was always taking the underground. And in um, in London, you have, I believe, yeah, easy 80, 85 percent of coverage where you have your uh, internet connection still on. That's fantastic. Uh, depends on the country. There are a lot of uh, parts where you have no uh, internet in the metro, and it's annoying. So. London was a good. I don't know in other country. I don't know if, where you are living, but I see that uh, apparently you are able to, listen, which is really, really good. Attenzione! Endrit is there, back with a YouTube membership. Thank you, Endrit. Really appreciate it, my friend. Thank you, my friend. I live in Miami. Ah, look. Oh, oh, Daniel. Hey, there was a Barzagli. Did you meet Barzagli, Daniel? There was Barzagli in Miami. Ah. Uh, There was Barzagli, Daniel. Did you meet him or not? In the um, last weekend, he was there. Um, London taxis are so overpriced. Um, and the taxi, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I was thinking about underground. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot, a lot. Also because you have a lot of queues there. Um, No, Barzali was there. He's back now. It's too late, Daniel. He was there with the Juventus uh, Miami fan club. There was a big thing with Juventus uh, Miami. Hey, if you missed him, it's too late now. Huh? <laughs> But uh, uh, no, no, the taxis are really overpriced. In London, is because there are a lot of problems. You know, you are there, a lot of queues, and he's waiting, waiting. And on top of that, it's expensive. I, I took it, you know, really when I need it, and I, uh, but otherwise it, it's, it's, it's really costly. Uh, of course there is Daniel, of course. There is one in uh, Florida Central, there is the big one Miami. Um, I don't know, where. What, what city are you from? Tampa, for example. If you are from Tampa, I can give you uh, immediately the, the contact. Okay, uh, do we have some people from... Uh, Uh, Florida Central or from Miami uh, Juventus Club that can uh, tell Daniel, Mamma mia. Uh, help our guy, guys. Who who does he need to contact? Juan is from Tampa. Hey, look, uh, Tampa, you have uh, my friend Martina that is also taking care. Martina Bedda. Try to, to find uh, uh, her on Instagram. Ah, Kshef, look, Kshef. Kshef is a, a part of the Florida Central. A Kshef, Florida Central is with Martina, with Jose and so on. So Juan, ask to Kshef in the chat, he will tell you. Oh, intellectuals, ciao grande. So what do we do? We need, we to do? We, we close because I said I will not go two hours because I'm old now. And unfortunately, uh, no, or luckily, that's the, that's the problem. Eh? By the way, Chiesa renewal won, eh? so it's a democracy. 54%. 54%. It's not a big difference. Eh? It's not a big difference. Eh? It's not a big difference. Um, ah, Juve Atalanta, it's true. It's true, Juve Atalanta. We had to speak about Juve Atalanta. 
uh, okay let me let me take then uh, uh, some water give me uh, two minutes I take some waters and uh, and then we do uh, Juve Atalanta and maybe a word about Merino Fiore Beppe you aren't 60 years old hey no I'm not 60 but uh, I'm 42 and uh, uh, the problem is you know what I wake up early early normal normal uh, 7.30 when, when in, the, in the weekend earlier because then I have the game uh, of football so I need to wake up earlier 7.30 I start uh, preparing I do two videos with editing eh? so it's not just I speak one video and uh, like the one of today it was long eh? and sometimes if I show you uh, my folder of how many takes I need to do for one video you will go crazy yeah um not you know that i try to go in one shot but that one shot maybe it's the 50th time that i uh, succeed because the first initial minute is a disaster um but and i do two videos um uh, plus most of the time a short then when not uh, or uh, I, I do and when i do these lives it's like two hours of speaking, speaking, then it's 1 a.m., then I don't like to sleep immediately after life because I have too many energy. After life, I have to, so I watch a, a series, then it's like 3 a.m. when I go to bed. And that's why I stopped at a certain moment with the lives because uh, I was really tired. But indeed, we have to speak about Atalanta and our midfield and Alcaraz and Merino. So give me a... Bah, Three minutes, I go bathroom, take water, and then we speak about that. Three minutes, and I'm back. Uh, if you leave, because now we are 129, if I see that we have less than 120, eh, then it means that uh, you don't care. I will check, meanwhile, I will check the other channel. Oh, we have 1840, channel football. Not a lot of views eh, on the last video. Not 400 like yesterday, 272 today. Uh, we need more. If you have nothing to do, meanwhile that you are waiting, go. Subscribe. Put a like on the video of today. Eh, and, then, uh, and then I come back. So give me two seconds. Where is the... Where is the... Here. I come back.
back. I'm back. I'm back, but I'm disappointed. I'm back, but I'm disappointed. Because we left at 1840 and we still have 1840. So not a single one of you, but seriously, not a single one of you went to my other channel to, to support. Not a single one of you. Not one. Not one person. How, how disaster is this? Disaster. Disaster. Uh, disaster. You are disaster. And we are 116. We're 112. Uh, so, uh, Joey already subscribed. That's the way. That That's the way. Grande Joe. Um, Joey. Yeah, it, it, it could be, yeah, it could be. Yeah, it could be. Could be, Thomas. That's that's the thing. Uh, yeah, but then wh why do you, don't you write comments? When, when you watch the videos, why why I don't see your name? You know who I always see? I see Aldo. I see Barbara that are writing comments. It's always the same, huh? the great, the great people. Uh, Bogdan, I will tell you who I always see. Bogdan every day. Barbara. Chef, Chef is always writing. Thomas from time to time is writing. Steve Cano, always. Steve Cano, he doesn't care. He goes two hearts, black and white. Demon C, always there. Thomas, I told you. Barbara, I told you. Uh, Marcello is always doing. Nino Sport, Rico, uh, De Gitti, uh, Peter Gitti. Uh, it's the usual ones. And then we also have uh, Punzar, Punzara, always. Um, these are, uh, these are the, the one. Uh, um, Tad and Fyodor, Fyodor, I forgot about Fyodor. I forgot about Fyodor, Fyodor, Fyodor always. I know, because it helps me, guys. Otherwise, you know what will happen? I will tell you the truth. Huh? In six months, my bank account will be zero. Because with the other channel, it's zero monetization at the moment. Huh? My bank account, I tell you open, huh? my bank account will be zero. And you know what I will do? I will close all the channels. I will go back to work. <laughs> and then I will say, for the first time of my life, I lost a challenge. It happens eh, in life. Sometimes it happens. Huh? But uh, hey, then I will close it. What do you want? Then I, after work, I will do a video of eight minutes and uh, I will say, uh, guys, I'm happy with you. I'm not happy with you. And uh, hey, but that's the reality, uh, guys. Oh, oh, if I don't do great work, I understand. If, if I'm putting a lot of efforts and uh, this is the reality. Uh, you think that it's uh, like this? Life is expensive, huh? Bo, seriously, um, Juve Atalanta. Hey, I'm scared, but you know, it's a different fear than Juve Napo uh, Napoli Juve. Napoli Juve, of course, Rabiot, McKenny. But the moment Napoli winning 6 1, uh, change in their home, the only thing for them, the only trophy that they really could compete for was the game against Juve, you know. Um, hey, of course, the comments they boost, of course. You know what, how how uh, YouTube works? When you have, when you put a video online, they check how fast it gets a boost, one. Two, the length of how long you watch. Because if you open, you close, YouTube is thinking in the algorithm, ah, he put on a shit video and people, they don't want to watch. So that doesn't work. And three is the interaction. Are people interacting with the, with the video? That And of course, the interaction is likes and it's comments. And this is all taken into consideration. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So more it works, more YouTube is pushing up front because they say, oh, that's a video. Not only people watch long, but on top of that, people... They are also interested in the video. They comment, they like, and so on and so on. Um, so, uh, what were we speaking about? Juve Atalanta. It's a different fear because Napoli already explained. Here, Rabio is not there. I can already tell you. 
Rabiot will not be there. McKenny could be there, but if he's there, he will play with a special thing and he will not be at 100%. If the team was complete, he would not have been played. He, he would not play. He would probably maybe be on the bench, but he would not play. Now he could play, but not at 100%. Alcaraz is not there. Um, Pogba and Fajoli, they, they were not there, neither. Uh, so we have no midfield. On top, Vlaovic is not there. It's tough, huh? Can we do... do you, you want to do a... You want to do a thing there, uh, a tactical map to check who can uh, be there or not. I don't know. Huh? Do we have enough player? Do, do we have enough to play with 11? I don't know. It's really a problem. Huh? Uh, the, the midfield of Atalanta is already better than ours. What is this? Here. So, uh, he will not be there. He will not be there. Who? So, Bremer plays. Bremer plays. Danilo is back. I don't know about the defense, huh? but wait, huh? we will play a bit. We go with the usual defense. Gatti, he will be back. Locatelli here. What the first thing I have in mind is this. I believe that Ealing Jr. will play. Uh, I believe that this will be the team. I believe that this could possibly be the team. If not, if not, if not. Could be, I believe that we will see this. Wait. I believe this can this will be the team guys. <laughs> Do you see other op tell me eh, if you see other options? Eh. Well, I will pay a bit more attention here. Ealing will be here. Chiesa could play on a bit more to the right side. Could be that we see this with Cambiaso a bit more here. Miretti a bit more here. Or like this, you know. Um... What are, the, what are the other options? The other option is Danilo in the midfield. I hope we don't see this. I really hope we don't see this. Uh, then you can go as crazy. Eh? You can go with like this eh? if you want to. Uh, but you don't have Vlaovic. And Moiskin will be there since uh, how long did he miss? So if you play with three, you have the problem that you have nobody on the bench really fresh to play a game. Except a few minutes of Moise. Uh, because if you play like this, you can possibly say, okay, we play with uh, uh, Miretti here and uh, Cambiaso here, you know. Uh, could be an alternative, but I don't, I don't see that. A, a two men with Miretti, Locatelli, uh, with uh, Ealing and, and Cambiaso, it's, it's tough, huh? 
or you can go towards the form and defense with uh, Alexandro. Where is Alexandro? Alex, Alex, Alexandro here. That could possibly be a possibility. Bremer Danilo could be uh, with a Gatti that he plays a bit more up. Or no Gatti, Cambiaso, that plays as a fake four, because when he goes up, these becomes three. And then you can do it like this, you know. Uh, it's a fake four here with Ealing Jr. that plays up. When we play with three, it comes in the middle. When we play with four, it can go wider. Could be a possibility, yeah? Chiesa really has a right. That could be a possible option, but I don't I don't believe so. I don't believe so. I really don't believe so because you have Vlaovic is missing, eh? Miretti will play. Oh, by the way, Miretti I liked against Napoli. Thank you, Lassa, for the nation, buddy. Lassa, Bremer, ah, leave. Bremer, Huysen, Giorgio, Baranecea, Kostic. Ah, Sell. Anderson, Merino, Ferguson, Diomande, Dorgu. Uh, now we have the player for a 4 2 2 run. Uh, Dorgu, I like. Eh? I really like Dorgu. And who do you play then as center backs? You play with a. If you sell Huysen, you sell Bremer, you play with who? As center backs with uh, Gatti Giallo or Rugani Giallo. Ah no, Diomande, Diomande Giallo. Okay, let's let's see the team of Lassa. Diomande Giallo center backs. Chesney to the goal. Dorgu on the left. Probably I don't know who you want to put there on the right side. Uh, in the middle, Locatelli, Ferguson, and Merino. Um, up front, Chiesa, Yildiz, Vlahovic. Yeah, yeah, you can play yeah, with 4 3, three. And Anderson is a rotational player. Um, or, ah, okay, Cambiaso left, Dorgo right. Uh, Dorgo is, is isn't he playing on the left? I think he's playing on the left, guys. Let me check. Patrick, yeah. Oh, guys. Oh, oh, oh. I told you I opened a new channel. I know everything about football now. Look. Um, I know because then uh, people uh, here. Left back position. Left back. You see. Why do you want to change? You're, you're, you're criticizing Allegri because he's changing position of the players. And then when we have a player, you already he didn't even arrive yet and you already want to change in position. Oh, he's a left back. Uh, left back, left... Uh, left foot, left back. Guys, why do you want to change in position already? Buonanotte Julian, I will close also. I will go to bed as well. Ryan, I feel he could make it back in time. Eh, could be, eh? Beppe, I still don't understand points club earn for the world. If Napoli wins... Now, if Napoli wins... <laughs> Wait, huh? the last time I counted, they had, we have, 40, we have 47 points, and that will not change. Napoli had 42. The draw in the knockout stages is one point, which means they have at the moment 43. If they qualify to the next round, so if they win, it's, if they win, if they win, it's two points. They need to win. They need to win. 
it's two points, so they go at 45. But also the qualification to the next round, I believe it's one, two points as well. No, it's one point. It's one point. Yeah. Yeah. That means they if they win, they automatically have three points. The victory and the qualification to the next round. So that's three points. If they win against Barca, they go at 46 and we have 47. That means that they didn't qualify yet. And that's the danger because they have two games then to play in quarterfinal. One draw is enough for them to go to the qualification. Why? Because if we have equal points, so with one draw, they have one point, one draw in two games, huh? they have one point, which means that they have 47 points. And with 47 points, they are equal to Juve. And if we are equal 47-47, it's Napoli because they are looking at the last four years who did the best performance or in Champions League. And it's Napoli that last year went to quarter final. Yeah, quarter? Yeah, quarter. Quarter final. Um, that's a good question. If they win in penalty in extra time, I believe it's one because they drew plus one because they qualify. So it's two points then. If they win on penalties because the game ended equal. That's what I believe. But again, that's the only question I still have. If they win on penalties, is it considered a win or is it considered a draw plus a qualification? That's, I don't know. Um, ah, yeah, 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 I said it. Huh? If they are out, which I don't believe, I believe they will go through. That's the video. Huh? That's the video. Um, hola, Claudio. Oh, but seriously, yeah? seriously, I don't believe it will happen, huh? but seriously, they lost Pedri, they lost um, De Jong, they are not in a great moment, Barcelona, they had the opportunity to kill the game immediately in Napoli, yeah? in the first 15 minutes, poor. they missed everything, huh? total disaster, total disaster, because now with that draw, and it gave them one point, and on top of that, uh, they can do something. Eh? They are not even playing in the uh, in the camp now. They are playing I don't know where, because the, they are in rebuild phase. No, I was thinking about doing a live reaction, but uh, no, because I I it it came briefly in my mind, and then I said no, we will lose. If I do that, I, we will uh, we will lose. I'm already speaking as a real cooler. Uh, yeah, yeah, I believe they will go through in the next. Then I don't know who they will play. Maybe they will lose two games. This I don't know, but I really believe they will go through. And when I saw Barcelona in the first 50 minutes, I said, mm, okay, let's go. Then I saw they were missing, missing, missing. I said, these guys, they will come back. Um, and they did. By the way, did you see the goal? The big fall of Ossiman before scoring. Did you notice or not? The fall of Ossiman before he scored. He made a Karateka move. Barcelona Napoli is the biggest game of Juve this year. Yeah, yeah. 100%. 100%. Barcelona Napoli is the biggest game of Juve this year. Yeah. Are you excited or not for. Uh, that uh, FIFA World Cup for club. I saw some debate, some people were saying, you know, uh, useless extra competition. Tell me if you are excited or not. Um, or if you think it's a good idea or not. Um, ciao Italian, buonanotte. Um, I'm super. If Juve goes, I'm excited. If Juve doesn't go, then I'm not excited. 
uh, as easy as that. I I think I think it's a re I'm not in favor of new competition. I don't like Nations League, for example. Theory, I don't like Nations League. Um, I'm not the big fan of the new format of uh, uh, the Champions League neither. Um, or you play against everyone or not. What does that mean? You play all with one point, but you don't play against each other. What does that mean? So I, I don't... I, I don't. But anyway, I'm not a big fan of increasing game because I believe we play too much. Not only it's really not great for the players, for injuries. On top of that... Uh, the quality of the game goes less and on top of that also the, the people there are too many games at a certain moment it starts to be boring and you know what happened the reality people are starting to watch because it's the game and they don't really watch they are on their phone they have the game in background they watch when you know when the commentator is raising a bit the voice then they, they, they watch, they, oh, something is happening, but you don't really watch with a full concentration for a night because there is too much, there is too much. Every day there is football and every day you can, so I think it's, but this one, I like. I don't like, for who watched, seriously, if your club is not participating, are you watching uh, that, uh, Intercontinentale club. Nobody watched that guy. The, it's not even trans transmitted in a lot of countries. You can't even watch it. Ma. Uh, nobody watched. Like the winner of Champions League from Asia, from Europe, from Africa, and from uh, I don't know where. Um, USA. S um nobody watch nobody watches but this one i think can be extremely great scrap the other ones and keep this one this one is extremely extremely great i believe um i really really like because it's a world cup huh? it's a world cup from clubs that's the idea that's the dream that's the, i love world cup Imagine if it's with Juve, a World Cup with Juve, but a real World Cup with groups of three teams. And then you go through to the knockout. It's fantastic. It is just fantastic. I, I think it can be extremely, extremely great. Uh, yeah, it's, of course, if Juve doesn't participate, it's the worst competition ever. But if it's not, I think it's really a great competition. Um, Matthew, thank you for the donation. Beppe, was Juve ever sponsored by Puma? If so, are there any kids you like? Unfortunately, uh, uh, no. So I can't tell you uh, which one I like because Puma has never sponsored Juve. Puma sponsored Italy before Adidas. But uh, no, they, ne they never sponsored uh, Juve. Um, in general... I'm not the biggest fan of Puma. They had, I believe, a few years ago, 2020, you know, a small revival with some cool stuff. Um, not only about football, I'm speaking in general about their collection. That was quite nice. <laughs> but in general, especially for football, I'm not the biggest uh, fan. Um... um Kappa, I know that a lot of you are speaking about Kappa. Kappa was fantastic in the 90s. Now it's different. Now it's really different. <laughs> if you see a lot of teams sponsored by Kappa, it's not the same as in the 90s. But why? Also because the 90s... Um, the 90s... The 80s, the 90s... The material was different. The sizing was different. Um, also because it remembers you beautiful tout and so on. It was totally different. You can't compare. Uh, Beppe, I saw you wearing Puma pants on the stream. Of, yeah, but it was uh, probably the pant of uh, the Italian national team that I was wearing. Yeah, yeah because Puma never sponsored Juve. Um, so it's Italy, not, not Juve. 
Um, I was speaking about you, Marcello. This this one, the Bilbao uh, here. I will show you a Kappa Bilbao from uh, season 1998. Kappa Bilbao, really beautiful. But you know, we are speaking about 98. We are speaking about this period of Juve was sponsored by uh, by um, by Kappa. Look at the sleeves with the beautiful Kappa sleeves. Uh, double color here, you know, with white uh, uh, and red on the sleeves representing the color uh, here. That uh, small logo here is really beautiful. Then the, the logo of uh, of Athletic Bilbao. This is this is Kappa, but that's ninety eight. You know, here is the back for people. This is the back, really beautiful back of the shirt, and the front is like this. That's really, really good. I, I really like this one. Um, let me check what I have here next to me. Adidas, Paris Saint-Germain is Nike. I have this one of, uh, and that's Adidas. Ah, look, look. This is from 94, Adidas. Seriously, guys, seriously. 94, they played the World Cup with that. It's Adidas, huh? It's not a Kappa, it's Adidas. Look at this shirt. Look at the details. You see the details, that reflection everywhere over the shirt with uh, the, the the logo of uh, Germany inside. Look at the different degradé of colors. It's extremely beautiful. All white in the back. Uh, all white in the back with that reflection logo everywhere. The color is extremely beautiful. Uh, Look at the small logo here. This this logo here that you can see, uh, this one is all over the shirt in reflection. Adidas, not even with the logo, just the word Adidas. This one is fan. It, it's really, 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 really beautiful. And we are speaking about Adidas. It's not Kappa. That's what I'm telling you, you know. In the past, shirts were different. They bring you emotion. And we all think that they are much better uh, than what we have today because today it's a different fabric it's a different fit it's a different cut it's totally different um, no I don't like Germany as a as a football country it's not my favorite country uh, I love Italy I love Juventus but if you're speaking objectively about the shirt it's a really beautiful shirt um, yeah could be Andy well, I believe that Ad it's true huh? Adidas is German from the brothers Dassler, um, Adi Dassler, um, Adi Dassler, Adi Dassler, Adidas, and the brother that created, by the way, uh, Puma. Um, so that's also a beautiful story to tell because they went in a fight and they have the offices like in the same street in front of each other. Really funny story. They went pissed off and. Uh, um, I don't have Belgium shirt, no, no. I don't support Belgium. Um, what else do I have? PSG. Yeah, these ones. Then I have, oh, look. This one is from Lotto. Do you like or not this shirt? This is not Kappa. This is uh, 2003. 2003. This is Lotto. Special design in the back. <laughs> this Lotto, it's not Kappa. You know, because it's the, the old shirts that are uh, vintage, it's, it's more beautiful and so on. The dark one with the color, uh, eh, which one? The dark blue from, yeah, yeah, the dark blue, I know. Um, but no, it make you know, the shirts I have, uh, I didn't, I, I don't even, um, at the end, I don't even keep them. 
every two weeks I take five new shirts and this one, uh, uh, I don't keep them. So it's uh, because I need to do for the other channel. So I, I take the shirts, I make videos, then I make some research. I'm a real big fan, you know, it also from a, a shirt, the story, what they represent, you know, I, I really love it. I really, really love shirts. Uh, and then I, I don't keep them. Then I have, in two weeks, I have new shirts. Uh, and it's always five, five new shirts every two weeks. Um, the only, the one, only one that I keep is Juve. Juve is Juve. Uh, Juve is Juve. Juve, of course, I, uh, it's always there in my collection. Um, Hey, Juve Chris, I didn't think as well that I would uh, be live. I said not two hours today and we are here, two hours. That's my problem. I know that when I start with the lives, I can't stop if it's not at least two hours. Um, problem. Your next new channel. But I'm doing a lot of shorts about really interesting stories where I speak about the shirts. I made a, you know, a really interesting one about the knot. For example, I didn't know that knot, they, they had a glory period, French club, that we played against in Europa League last season, by the way, um, with a fantastic goal of Di Maria. But they had a fantastic glory period that I was able to watch when I was uh, younger. Um, but I didn't know that they won a cup, Coupe de France, against, I believe, if I'm not wrong, if my memory is right, against the fourth division team, final, eh? the final against the fourth division team. And uh, they have beaten them, if I'm not wrong, 2-1. And uh, at the end of the game, they actually um, invited the captain of the other team to lift the trophy together. Uh, also called now there the a gesture of fair play. They called it the, the fair play, the fair play cup that edition of the because it was actually super fair play, and they uh, they were of course happy because they won. But they were thinking also about the the young smart small team you know from four division that uh, was that close to their dream and they lost in the final so they shared uh the beautiful stories huh? about i really love shirts the story what it explained what they did um now i made the research about atletico bilbao uh, i didn't do yet about the other shirts that will be for next week about merino guys it's already two hours i spoke about it uh, this morning but i believe that one thing I can tell you, if Juntoli goes in first person to watch a player, it doesn't mean he will arrive, but means that it's serious. It means that he goes there maybe already to start investigating a bit more uh, on the player. Like, is it feasible, not feasible? Uh, otherwise, he doesn't go there. Two thousand and ten, eleven best away shirts. Uh, I didn't really like that period, to be honest, uh, because we were seventh. So the memories are not great. But which one? The white with the Italian flag in the middle, in turner shape, a bit turner shape. If it's this one that you are referring to, the wa total white with the Italian flag in the middle. Uh, I don't own that shirt, uh, but it's not the best one in terms of if you if you have it in your hands. According to me, it's like a bit flat. Something is missing to that shirt. Um, yeah, something is missing. Yeah, with the Balocco logo is even worse. Uh, but you know, it's like. I miss something on that shirt. Um, Daniel Merino is a great player. He has presence, physically smart, technical, and goals in him. A great, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like uh, Cope Miners. I, I think, forget about it. Never, never sixty million euro. Forget about it. With player, without player, I don't care. I think that, uh, okay, we will speak about him, I will follow, I like the player, but I think for 60 million euros, forget about it. Um, 
the black and gold is really beautiful. Um, yeah. But it's not from the 2008, it's uh, 2015, 16, I believe. 15, 16, yeah. The black and gold. Um, the gray one i like the gray one with um but the gray one are you speaking about the 2009 shirt because it's nice but uh, i always think about um a famous quote it was from uh ranieri i think ranieri said uh, when he was our coach uh was it ranieri i'm not sure now because ranieri didn't do that bad eh, with juve I don't know, uh, but it's a una Juve d'acciaio, um, una Juve d'acciaio, an uh, iron Juve, and I always think about that, and at the end, uh, it was nothing iron, it was a disaster, that's why I'm always uh, thinking about that shirt, but the shirt is, is, is really beautiful, it's really beautiful, um, yeah, yeah, this one, this one. Which one? But which one are you speaking about? I did a tier list about shirts. I don't remember I did that. When did I do that? Boop. Not for me, in the worst shirt, we have the lime green that I have from 1314 with Pirlo, lime green. Uh, I have, I know it's really unpopular, but I have never liked really much that uh, pink of 2011-12 with the big star here. It has never been my big favorite. This one was, I appreciated it more now that I have it in my collection, that's true, but I have never been the biggest fan of that shirt. Um, lime green, the this pink one that I'm speaking about. Which one I don't like? Uh, there are a few that I don't like. Huh? Beppe, did you like the first shirt of 2017? Yeah, but you have to tell me 16, 17, or 17, 18. And please help because I try, yeah, by heart. 17, 18, I believe was a good year for the shirts. 16, 17, let me check, let, let, let me check. Um, I, I hate Bing, I don't know why it's always there. Uh, Ah, uh, I have this one with Pjanic. I have this one with Pjanic. And uh, yes, I like. Yes, I like. Yes, I like. Um, but look, I like. I like. This one I like. I like. Not my favorite one. But I start not liking it when you see that big white H. It's really strange. And from the moment that you see it, you can't unsee it anymore. It's a bit less uh, visible when you wear it. But like this, it's not a bad shirt, I, I have to say. You know which one I do not like in home shirts is this one. You will go crazy when I will show you. But I already said that story, yeah? But this one is actually the... Cristiano Ronaldo first season. <laughs> I really don't like this shirt because here, because it's reverse color, you really see that H. Here, you, in the other one, you don't see that much because of the reverse color. But here, I think it's like, I don't know, 
uh, they just did boom, H, and and that's it. Uh, y, what does that represent with that uh, G? I, 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 it's strange. It's really strange. This one I I never really liked a lot. Um, it's iconic, of course, first shirt of Cristiano. But here, look, look, look at Cristiano with the H there. Why? Look. No, I want to see the picture with Cristiano, guys. This one. Look. It's strange, no? You see that big H. Uh, boop. Uh, ciao Ricardo, grande Ricardo, uh, ciao buddy, ciao Ricardo, thank you for the nation. Wanted to say a big thank you to Mo in Telegram group chat and also Mr. Sicilian Beppe, Kappa Jersey all the way. Um, eh, but the Telegram group, at the moment we post it. Marcello, j'ai pas le palace, j'en rêve. Mais je j'ai pas envie de dépenser une folie non plus, j'ai plus d'argent. Mais uh, ouais, j'en rêve. Uh, no, at the moment we post the Telegram group, um, I already explained it in um, in a few words. Um, in a few, I explained it, uh, writing it in the in the chat. Why? Uh, but I, I want to decide this week or next week what to do with it. I uh, I want to talk also with more what we do uh, with the news because why did I start it? In the past, we had an open group without news. It was just chatting about Juve uh, and that was a total mess um, and I stopped it quite fast we grew a bit and then I stopped it because it was impossible to control because it was just a feed you know like like whatsapp boom 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 boom, boom message 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 it was just impossible to follow we closed I waited a bit I waited a bit and then I came with that idea of reporting news so nobody is disturbed um, and then you have the possibility to enter the comment section if you want to talk about something more smaller. Um, but I said, you know, when I see the news on social media, um, I see a lot of toxicity. From the moment that you say your opinion or whatever, you are attacked by everyone. It's not a funny place, social media. Uh, but I still want people from our community to be able to communicate, to speak, to, to, to dialogue, to interact with other Juventini. And for we did it for years, huh? I believe two years and a half, three years. And for three years, it worked really well. Of course, all opinions are welcome, but not irrespectful things, not especially when things are going bad with a, a game, with a leg, then you see that people are not accepting diverse opinions. Um, they... I respect your opinion, but you're a clown. Or uh, uh, th this kind of annoying sentence that you don't understand. Uh, when are you born? You you just start watching Juve because they want. Um, you know, a lot of these annoying things where you can't speak anymore. And that's one of the reverse part of the medal of uh, um, having 1,500 people. You can't manage everyone, even if not everyone is writing. But it's always the same thing, always the same. And it's not even funny anymore to enter a comment. So I'm doing it for free. I'm not doing it for likes. If I wanted likes, if I wanted more exposure, I would have done it on uh, on Twitter or on Instagram or whatever. Um, I, I, don't, I, I get nothing out of it from, you know, return on investment of the time that we are doing with Mo, with me, with my son, that was helping for a lot. No, but when, when I see that what I didn't like on social media, I see it in our community, I, I don't like it. I don't like it. Um... Because, because that's not what it was meant to be. I'm not a journalist. I'm, I don't have any interest in reporting news. I'm doing it on my channel every single day. I read the paper. So I, I did it for the community. Then um, it's difficult to start banning people because who do you ban? People because they have a harsh opinion. People that comes from another culture and they express themselves in a bit more harsh way. Uh, you know, it's tough to take a decision about who do you ban, who starts the discussion. 
it's not funny. Um, then I start also people seeing uh, uh, that they are insulting me. Guys, it's my community. It's my home. It's Jesus Tube with Telegram. Group. If, if we have people that are insulting me, no. <laughs> uh, then on top of that, you had a lot of people from other uh, reporters that were just stealing the news that we were reporting and they put it online without tagging us. All these things are an accumulation where you're saying, mm, mm, uh, why, why, uh, why doing it? You know, that, that's a bit, you know, all the things, because it needs to be a place where you're happy to click on a comment or, or on a news and to discuss and to, to enrich yourself and to become bigger. Then you have, of course, another decision. People told me, hey, Beppe, you know what? Uh, ban the comment section. So people have just news, but no. You then go on Twitter. You can read them yourself, the news. It's easy. Eh? Follow uh, bigger accounts that are doing it and you will have all the news. My point was not reporting news. My point of the Telegram group was giving a place that was not toxic for Juventini to speak, being easy, chill, and knowing that it's a really nice place. With all the news, all under one thing, easy to do. Uh, without comment section, it makes sense. Some people told me, I make it for uh, people, they need to pay for it. And no, I don't want that people pay for news. That's not my goal. Um, you see, so I don't want to be rich with Telegram or I don't want to be a, a reporter, journalist, having the fame, an insider. Um, it was to have a nice space. Um, that it's true, huh? what I don't like on social media is that there is a lot of misinformation. Um, not always translated well or just what is interesting uh, because of an agenda or not. It depends who you follow. Um, or sometimes even posting things that are said by people in Italian that are hating Juve. And these are things that I avoided to post in the Telegram group. Because why should I translate people that are really, but I know the people, I know who they are, what they are doing, because I'm Italian. Um, eh, but no, but people have the freedom to, to, to read and to have an opinion. And no, and no, of course they have the freedom to think what, uh, what they want and to make an opinion. But if we are feeding and firing up already all the hate that we have, makes no sense then if there is a news Allegri will be sacked or there is Tiago Mota of course you have to put them Juve mm. eh. Chris bro thank you for your donation my buddy really appreciate it Beppe thank you for being the voice of a fan I'm not the voice of fan base you are the only influencer I follow and haven't looked back keep up the good work so I, I don't uh, consider myself a uh, voice of a fan base and uh, even less an influencer. Imagine if I was an influencer. The only influence I want to have is on uh, on my son. I want him to be a, a good person. Then I can succeed in my mission or I can fail in my mission. Only the future will tell. Until today, and he's nearly 16, I believe I did a good job. Then in the future, we don't know. Um, no, influencing what? Influencing what? I mean, if I influence nothing. Uh, as a content creator, I like. I like the word content creator because at the end, I con I create content. Um, here, on the other channel, on Juve channel, uh, I did some entertaining things. I did a lot of information things. We, we dialogue, we speak. You know, the live, now it's already 2 hours 16. It's the thing I love the most because we are speaking between us, between Juventini. We have a lot of fun uh, in a relaxed way without the emotions of the game. Just speaking, I love it, the interaction. But uh, influencing, no, I, uh, you know, I have not even... We, we can't even reach 29,000 here on the channel after four years. Imagine what the... So... Um, it, 
no, influencers, we are speaking about uh, 1 million, Chiara Ferrani is an influencer, uh, these people really have an impact, influence, I, I impact nothing. Then about being the voice of a fan base, um, I believe I'm, I'm the voice of, a, uh, of my channel, about my thoughts, but far from me, uh, you know, wanting to represent a part. The only thing that I try to do here, try, uh, that doesn't mean always succeeding, is being objective and explaining and going with my, my feelings about who I am. I am a balanced person when things are not emotional at the moment. Because on the moment I am really a fire person, but after that I'm, I'm super, super balanced in uh, how I think, how I uh, analyze, because I work for big corporation all my life. I know how it works. I know that it's much more wider than what we think and just not focusing on one thing. Um, and also because I love Juventus so much, I decided to spend my life for Juve, um, so I really love Juve so much, but I have the capacity after a loss, after a draw, or even if difficult moments, to wake up and to understand that life goes on. And that you have a family, that you have uh, friends, that you have uh, other things, that you can't be influenced for too long about a negative result, about a bad play, about... It makes no sense, huh, guys? The other words, you go crazy. You go crazy. I think Juve 24-7. I think I live Juve 24 I have it tattooed on my skin. Um... But I have the capacity to switch and to say, okay, that was bad. We spoke about it. Now we think about the next one. Um, maybe Juventus officials should expose your channel more. What is the interest of Juve to do so? Um, I don't see the interest for Juve. Eh? Why? And then uh, I start speaking bad about Juve and uh, they help me to become bigger and uh, it's not... No, no. I work for Juve as an external um, where I do two lives a week and I'm extremely proud about that. Uh, they give me the trust to interview players so that's fantastic, that's beautiful. Though. My channel is my channel. Um, that's why on my channel if you see in the description it's not written, I work for Juve, or what? Well, I, I never use it here. On, how many times did we really speak about I work for Juve? I believe nearly never, because I never wanted to take an advantage for that. Never, never, never. Um, then, the day I will stop for Juve, because one day it will happen and I will not work for Juve anymore. Uh, that day probably I will write for three years, for four years, five years, uh, I work for you. Um, and I have inside stories that now I can share. But un until then, no, I don't want to take advantage of it. And maybe then, maybe then I will start contacting players, which will I have a link with and so on, asking, you know, do you want to come on my channel? Uh, who knows, huh? we can have, uh, you know, Rabio, uh, Sule, Rogani, uh, you know, then I can ask. As long as I work for you, I will never take advantage, because it's not correct, I believe. Matthew, I used to follow Laker Film Room. They had incredible analyses. Then they became Laker employees and I stopped watching because they should, couldn't say anything negative about the team. You have a good thing. I always said it. I can say whatever I want. Of course, but that's not written in a contract or so. Huh? That's just, I think, a logic. I will never say, but... It's normal, I think. Uh, player X 
is shit. Because the day after, maybe you have a life with that player. And or I am someone that is not correct. And then I will start big, big smiles with the player. I love you. You're fantastic. You're great. What a beautiful. Uh, and the day before I said that it was shit. It's not consequent, I believe. Then if player X had a bad game, I can say it without any problem here. And I will say it also on the YouTube channel. And I can say it also in his face. But that's respecting, in a way, your colleagues. Like when I was working for a big corporation, I never said employee X, my colleague or this one is shit. Because you don't do this kind of thing. But I think it's human basic respect. Uh, that's why I don't jump on hashtag Allegri out or uh, when Dybala I was playing Dybala out because I didn't like or um, I don't know Bernardeschi's shit no you can say Bernardeschi is having a really bad season and in a tier list the performances of that player that season were really bad Alexander you know it I always said it is not my favorite player never <laughs> It's like that. You can like and dislike, but that doesn't mean that it will be disrespect with the player. That is a fantastic person. That is really a fantastic person. I judge on the channel the performance of the player. And that's the thin line between wanting to create buzz and, 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 and some people, they don't like my channel, which is correct. Huh? You can like and dislike. This is personal opinion. Because... I don't speak with bold statement about, you know, using these big words. But I'm not like that. I'm not a person like that. Um, yeah, I believe I, I can be, you know, here we can, like, the last few games, I pointed finger at Allegri. If, if, if Juve... Uh, if Juve um, obliged me to only say positive things about them on throne, you know, probably I would not do this channel anymore because then I would have sent, so, sell, sold my soul and that's, that's not okay. Then, of course, you have to pay attention, of course. You have to pay attention that you don't say really strange things that people will interpret bad and, you know, that, that, but, but that's normal, I believe. Um, I was searching for you when used and I found you. You were the first Juve channel supported. I subscribed. Grazie. Um, Andrew, fratello, Be, thank you for 15 months. Beppe, do you, any, does anyone else call you the king of the castle or just me? Good to see you. Nobody calls me the king of the castle. That is reminding me of uh, a song. Um, Nani nani na 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 king of the castle. Ta di da di da 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 di ta di ta ta. Well, really nice. No, nobody calls me the king of the castle. Only you. But I'm happy that uh, it's only you that is calling me like that, uh, Andrew. Um, that's it. Oh, guys, we said we said shorter than. Uh, but let's put it on. Ciao, Rob. Let's put it on, it was um, it was the first one. Now, if I continue like that, I will... You know that tomorrow morning, speaking about Juve, tomorrow morning, as every Friday morning, um, we have... Um, I have a meeting with Juve every Friday morning. This is something... Uh, every Friday morning, I wake up, I'm like this, you know, uh, and I'm... Uh, I'm live, uh, live. It's a uh, team. What is it? Teams. Microsoft Teams uh, call with you uh, every Friday morning. So at least you know what I'm doing on Friday mornings. Every Friday mornings meeting. Um, that's good. That's good. That's really good. Did, did, I, did I already tell you? Uh, a really nice story. And then we, then we stop, huh? Then we stop. Um, one day, it was last season, one day, I will not tell you everything, but apart. One day I was uh, live in a meeting with Juve. Uh, and usually, you know, they do also from uh, an isolated space. 
at one day they were in a, a bit more open space there and uh, i was talking with uh, the person um meeting you how it was uh, what we will do etc etc and at a certain moment uh i see quadrado arriving from the back in the offices usually they are they never come there he was i don't know why he was there in the offices and then he saw that we were there <laughs> that i was there and uh, he started saying hello and then uh, i had a chat with quadrado like this friday morning with quadrado that was really really special really 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 special um I, I liked it. Then, uh, unfortunately, he left for Inter. Uh, but at that moment, I didn't know. So, uh, can you imagine, guys? Just imagine. You are doing a team uh, meeting uh, for your work, for your school, whatever. And then, uh, out of nowhere, you're not even prepared. You see, uh, I don't know, uh, Federico Chiesa or uh, Cambiaso. Arrive and say, hey, ciao, hola. And, speak, and starting to speak. Fantastic, fantastic quadrado. Um, bah, that's it ragazzi now we stop seriously because uh, it's late huh? uh, so thank you to Andrew Juve Chris to Ricardo to Matthew to Lasse Endrit Mohamed Juve Pels Hendrik Amir Aman all the people in the chat Fyodor LJJ Shervin Juan Echeveri that believe that he can go away coming back and asking for a recap oh the live is still there you can watch the replay ciao jim ciao dragoons ciao all things football thank you to all the people now it's already two hours 30 we stopped i didn't even check if we are putting some likes we missed one like for 150 this is something i believe we can reach easy no i believe we can we can reach easy 150 at least no um And even here, look, 1845, which is really nice. Uh, really, really nice. Thank you, guys. You are fantastic. Um, Buona notte. Jim Josue. What a beautiful name. Josue is a beautiful name. Uh, ciao a tutti. Grazie. We we'll see each other tomorrow. Grazie forza.